It is July 7th, 1974. The Munich Olympic Stadium. The situation. West Germany defeats the Netherlands in the final game for the most prestigious title in soccer. The World Cup. The final score. West Germany 2, Netherlands 1. The captain of the West German team, Franz Beckenbauer. You know, it's a big aim for every soccer player to play in a national team and afterwards you be the captain and then you win the World Cup. 1974 here, this place in this beautiful stadium. I was the captain of the team and I was very, very happy, maybe in this moment the happiest man in the world because we won the World Cup. country of the world, there is a legendary sports hero. Athletes whose exploits are revered from generation to generation. Men and women whose performances will live through the ages. Timeless, universal, immortal. They are numero uno. This is Munich, West Germany. A little more than four months after Germany surrendered to the Allies to end World War II in Europe, Franz Beckenbauer was born in Geising, a working class district in Munich. I lived here in this building, this apartment building, uh, with my parents and my brother. I was born in 1945. After the war, 45 in Germany, every building broke down. And, and you know, Germany was a very poor country. It was nothing to do, and so. We start maybe in the 50s, 50, 55, the tennis balls come out, and so we play this tennis ball. Then it was our dream to have one letter ball. So we, we, we find newspapers, iron, steel, and then we sell this, uh, and then we get a little of money, pennies, and so and we save and save and save. Then after one, two years, we had money enough to, to buy a letter board. And, you know, it was uh, like we had Christmas every day. This is Walter Beckenbauer, Franz's older brother. I am four years older than Franz. I really think that Franz's great ability today had its beginnings when we were children. We had nothing, no sports shoes, no uniforms, only a tennis ball to kick and play with. Even as a child, Franz was able to control the tennis ball, just as he today controls the soccer ball. I think it's very important for a soccer player to, to play with a, a ball like this, you play with a tennis ball, because you need a lot of more feeling to, to kick against the tennis ball than a soccer ball, because a soccer ball is much bigger than a tennis ball, and you need, you need more and more feeling to kick against the, the tennis ball. When I was 10 years old and Franz was 6, I played with a group of boys my age. Franz would watch from behind the fence, hoping someone would drop out. Mostly he was the ball boy for us, chasing and retrieving the ball when it went off the field. When he did get into the game with the bigger boys, they did not like it. He made the taller boys look quite ridiculous. So Franz again was not permitted to play, but this time, because he was just too good. This is the Bayern Munich administration headquarters and training center in Munich. Bayern Munich, an athletic organization with 800 members. 65 teams competing in five different sports. Bayern Munich, the most successful soccer team in West German history. Bayern Munich, the team Franz Beckenbauer played with for more than a decade. With Bayern Munich and as a member of three World Cup national teams, Franz Beckenbauer became the greatest player in European soccer. In 1964, when Franz Beckenbauer was 19 years old, he joined the Munich club. The following year, he played his first game as a member of West Germany's national squad, the team that in 1966 would be involved in the most controversial single play in the history of the World Cup. Well, I remember almost the whole game because it was a big game. We reached the final and that was a very, very great success for the team. It was tied 2-2 two to two after the normal game and then we went to the overtime and then uh, the English team, the score, uh, the third goal, 
The goal that still rages with controversy today took place 10 minutes into the overtime period. Jeff Hurst of Great Britain kicked for a goal from 20 feet out. The ball was deflected upward, hit the crossbar, and came straight down on what appeared to be exactly on the goal line. Soccer rules state, the ball must be entirely past the goal line to count as a goal. The official who called it a goal was more than 40 yards from the goal line. I think, and I was very close to the situation, maybe 10, 15 meters uh, far from this situation, and my opinion was it wasn't a goal. But, you know, the referee or the linesman, they talk to another and they decide goal. I think it was a very bad decision and it was very shame for the West German team to lose a World Cup final in, in a case like this. It was during the World Cup final against England that Franz Beckenbauer first received worldwide attention. Instead of making use of Beckenbauer's all-around ability, West Germany's manager Helmut Schoen assigned Beckenbauer to mark England's high-scoring Bobby Charlton throughout the entire game. I had a very hard time during the World Cup final because I had to mark Bobby Charlton. And Bobby Charlton was, to this time, one of the best players in the world. And his um, ability was, of course, to run 90 minutes. And he never stopped, and he ran and ran. And, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, what does it mean as a young player for me, as a newcomer, I was 20 years old, to follow a very experienced man and a, one of the best players in the world, Poppy Charlton. After the 1966 World Cup final, Franz Beckenbauer began to revolutionize the game. He was moved from midfield to sweeper, the last defensive player in front of the goalkeeper. Traditionally, the sweeper's job was purely defensive. The sweeper rarely moved to midfield or the offensive zone. With Beckenbauer, the sweeper position could truly be known as libero, literally free to move anywhere. The entire field would become Franz Beckenbauer's home. I think the libero position is the one of the important position in the team because the sweeper or libero is a free man. He can do everything. And his first duty is to organize the defense, then to go to the midfield to, to support the midfield player and then if he has the opportunity to score goals. He can do, uh, he's free, like the, like the name it's called. And uh, I think it's one of the important uh, position in the team. Hugh McElvaney, one of England's most respected columnists and soccer authorities, observed Beckenbauer's career from the beginning. A lot of men achieve greatness in football without ever being great strikers of the ball, but Beckenbauer was a magnificent striker. I mean, his right foot was the equivalent of a set of golf clubs. He could just do anything he wanted with the ball. Great explosive pace when he wanted to use it, and a marvelous control while running at speed. A great eye for the percentages. In fact, that is the theme that runs right through his career, is that he is perhaps the greatest calculator of the percentages on the field that I've seen. One of the most devastating elements in his game is the ability to decide exactly when to release the ball. He will allow opponents to come a certain distance towards him and whenever they're in no man's land, he just hits the ball past them and they're dead men. I remember Pelé said to me that he found it surprising that a man of such monumental ability should want to play as far back as Franz played in the team. But he liked to start out at the back. His philosophy seemed to be that he wanted to be well back so that he could see the whole picture of the game, work out the odds, decide when they were in his favor, and then come through and make killing surges at the opposition. But a lot of other players like Pelé will play up at the front where there's a great deal of scuffling and take a lot of buffeting. Franz was never uh, too keen on being buffeted. I think when a player is as great as Beckenbauer, how he plays on the field is a direct expression of his nature. You can never separate the performance in the arena from the essence of the man. Once he's playing at that level, if the word genius has any relevance in football, then you'd have to say that Beckenbauer possessed it. The 1966 World Cup competition was just the beginning of an international career that saw Franz Beckenbauer represent the West German national team in 103 games. 
In addition, he led Bayern Munich to four national soccer championships. This is high-scoring center forward Gert Müller, nicknamed the Bomber, and a teammate of Franz Beckenbauer at Bayern Munich. He joined Beckenbauer as a member of the West German national team for two World Cups. When I first came to Bayern Munich in 1964, I had the good fortune of having Franz as my roommate. I played with Franz for 10 years, and I could not have had a better friend, both on and off the field. We understood each other completely. When Franz came forward on the offense, it was a pleasure to behold. Such calmness, such control. He was the leader. There was no question of that. After the 1966 World Cup, Beckenbauer became the driving force behind Bayern Munich's first great soccer success. It was 1967 and we were a very young team and it was a very big surprise because we won the Europe Cup. And then the first time when Bayern Munich won the German championship, it was 1968 and we were of course very, very happy to have the first time the title as the West German championship. This is Bayern Munich's goalkeeper, Sepp Meyer. Meyer came to the team at the same time as Beckenbauer and played with him for more than a decade, including two World Cup competitions. Franz was 15 and I was 16 when we first played together. Then later we played together again for Bayern Munich. It was fantastic to see his brilliance in front of me. I could observe his play throughout each game. Sometimes I would lose my concentration because I was in such admiration of what he was doing. It is Mexico, 1970, the quarterfinal round of the World Cup, a rematch between England and West Germany, the two finalists of four years earlier when England won the Cup. Meeting for the second time in World Cup play, Franz Beckenbauer of West Germany and Bobby Moore, one of the all-time greats from England. I think his greatest talents, uh, without a doubt, are his uh, passing ability and his simplicity, the way he plays the game. I mean, we have a saying here in England, which I think most people associated with football would say the same all over the world. Uh, football is a simple game made difficult. Good players play the game easy. France plays it easy, makes it look easy. He makes it look so easy at times, people think he can probably do a lot more. Now, I think that basically sums France up. You know, he plays the game simple, he makes the games look, look easy, and it's only for one reason, because he's such a good player. He is such a marvellous judge of where to run. Bobby Moore is the other man who comes to mind who can do that. I once asked Bobby about speed and he said, well, if how long it takes you to run from A to B is the measure of speed, then I'm slow. But if knowing when to run from A to B is also something to do with speed, then I'm not so slow. And Franz Beckenbauer, in common with Moore, had this great gift of knowing exactly where to run and when. And also Franz was a bit quicker than Bobby, so uh, that helped. Now in the quarterfinals of the 1970 World Cup, England leads West Germany 2 to nothing. With the game already half over, West Germany is on the attack. Beckenbauer has the ball. Beckenbauer scores, and West Germany trails 2 to 1. Later, Uwe Zieler of West Germany scores, and the game is now tied. It stays that way during regulation time. Then in overtime, with Beckenbauer guiding the team, West Germany is again on the attack. Gert Müller scores. Beckenbauer came through and took control of the game and won the match. He scored the goal that brought Germany back into the match and uh, was at the heart of the revival that, that ended with uh, an utterly remarkable victory for West Germany. Now West Germany would meet Italy in the semi-final. It was a very good game. I was a little unlucky in this game because one guy, a defender from the Italian team, he falls me very, very bad and I dislocated my shoulder. I couldn't move the, the arm after this and so I got a bandage around my arm and my body to fix them on, on my body and so I played like this and, you know, I lost, of course, maybe 50% of my game. With Beckenbauer playing with an arm sling, the game goes into overtime. Now the goals come quickly. Müller first scores for West Germany. Then Italy ties the score at two. Italy goes out in front three to two. Now Gert Müller scores his second goal to tie the game again at three. 
Finally, Italy scores the fourth and final goal of the game. Once again, West Germany is stopped in its quest to win the World Cup. I scored two goals, but losing the game was not a happy experience. Once France received this painful injury, it was a different game. Who knows what would have happened if he had been in perfect physical condition. I would like to think that we would have won the game against Italy and then would have gone on to defeat Brazil in the final. But it was not to be. We again would have to wait four more years. July 7, 1974. West Germany has again made it to the finals. This time their opponents, the team from the Netherlands. It is the 10th World Cup final. Eighty thousand people are at the stadium in Munich, the scene of the Olympic Games two years earlier. The World Cup, competed every four years since 1930, except during the World War II era. Uruguay, the host nation, won the first championship. The World Cup, 14 inches high and cast in gold. Three times the host nation has won the cup. Uruguay in 1930, Italy in 1934, and England in 1966. Here in Munich, West Germany will try to become the fourth host nation to win the cup. Captain Franz Beckenbauer of West Germany and Captain Johann Kreif of the Netherlands lead their teams onto the field. West Germany and the Netherlands have made it to the finals after a series of elimination contests extending over two and a half years and including 126 original countries. 16 countries made it to the final round. After a round-robin series, the Netherlands won its division with three straight victories, not giving up a single goal. West Germany also won three straight games, but gave up two goals to Sweden in their 4-2 victory. Representing West Germany, six members of the Bayern Munich team, including Franz Beckenbauer, Gerd Müller, and Sepp Meyer. The game gets underway. After the first minute of play, the Netherlands is awarded a penalty shot when their great Johan Cruyff is tripped in the penalty area. Naiskins of the Netherlands takes the shot. After a little more than a minute of play, the Netherlands leads one to nothing. At the 20 minute mark, Holzenbein is tripped by Janssen. The West Germans are given a penalty shot. Breitner ties the score at one. Kreipf is all over the field. Beckenbauer, from his sweep of position, is always aware of his presence. Finally, with two minutes to go in the half, Gert Müller gets the ball. West Germany goes out in front, two to one. In Munich in 74 against the Dutch, he just took the breath away. This performance was utterly magical because of um, the flawless concentration of it. He never once lost track of what was happening on the field and never once lost the sense of what he should do to influence what was happening on the field. In the second half, Meyer is called on to make great save after great save. Beckenbauer is always there in front of him. Finally, there is less than one minute to play. Final score, West Germany 2, the Netherlands 1. And so it is 
done. After three tries, Franz Beckenbauer has led his team to the World Championship of Soccer. It is a fitting climax. For during his magnificent career, he represented the West German national team 103 times in international competition. Franz Beckenbauer, the winner of every individual honor and award that the world of soccer offers. Franz Beckenbauer, who led his Bayern Munich team to every national and European championship. In 1977, he joined the New York Cosmos, and on Franz Beckenbauer Day, the legendary Pelé paid tribute to him. I want to give that presentation to the man Beckenbauer. would be one more dramatic moment for Franz Beckenbauer. This man who has done everything, who has won everything. He would return to his homeland to play for the first time against Bayern Munich. Though on opposite sides, he would again be reunited with his old comrades. When asked about Franz Beckenbauer's greatest game, Sepp Meyer said, his greatest game Every game he plays is his greatest game. Franz Beckenbauer had come home.